UK government will soon be introducing fundamental changes in how money works. The changes are being planned by central banks around the world, including the UK's central bank, the Bank of England. These changes, once introduced, will affect everyone. So, what are these changes really about? The changes being proposed will mean that you will no longer have full control over your spending. In fact, what they are planning is the replacement of money with something which is fundamentally different. Therefore, it's not just cash they want to remove from the economy, it is money itself. Pay attention, because if the new monetary system is allowed to happen, it will be very difficult to reverse and could mark the beginning of the end of human freedom. In order to explain the changes that are being planned right now for your tomorrow, let's explain a little bit about how your money works today. Let's imagine that John decides to buy his daughter a birthday present from Argos. He chooses the product he wants, then pays £50 using his debit card. You might think that £50 is immediately transferred from John's bank account to Argos's bank account. But this is not what happens. A record is created showing that John's bank owes Argos's bank £50, and John's account will even show that the money has left his account, but the actual transfer of funds does not occur at the time of purchase. John's £50 purchase is one of about 50 million UK transactions that occur every day, and although in each case the account may show that the money has been transferred, the actual movement of funds between the banks only occurs once every day. Every 24 hours, all the payments made to and from each of the UK's 300-plus registered banks are added up to determine how much each bank owes the others. The Bank of England, which is the central bank that all other banks in the system are connected with, derives the total amount that each bank owes and is owed for that day. The Bank of England then intermediates and exchanges funds between all the other banks. So the Bank of England does not know anything about John or the £50 he spent on his daughter. John's money is just a tiny part of a huge transfer of funds. This means that the only organisation that can see what John does with his money is his own bank. The central bank cannot see what John spends his money on or when he spends it and John's bank is under an obligation not to share details of his spending with anyone. This means that, rightly, there is a good degree of anonymity and privacy over what John decides to spend his money on. This, in turn, means that a government or central authority, such as the Bank of England, cannot directly restrict John when he uses his debit card, because it has no visibility of what John is doing with his money. If John had paid for the present with £50 of cash, then the purchase would be completely anonymous. Nobody, including John's bank, would know what he had spent his money on. So, cash transactions are truly anonymous, and debit card transactions have a high degree of anonymity, because only your bank can know about them. So, what is this new system? The name of the new system is called Central Bank Digital Currency, or CBDC. It sometimes has other names, such as smart money. Here's how it works. Let's imagine that John, again, decides to buy his daughter a birthday present from Argos. His mobile phone has a smart money wallet or app on it, from which he pays £50 for the product. The app communicates directly with the central bank, the Bank of England, and the money is transferred from his digital wallet to Argos's digital wallet in less than a second. The transfer of funds occurs at the time of purchase, and the transaction is recorded and approved by a centralized computer system on a centralized blockchain. A blockchain is a special computer program that records information very reliably and cannot be amended. The centralized computer system runs continuously and can deal with hundreds of transactions per second as they occur throughout the entire economy, 
processing all of the public's purchases being made by millions of digital wallets. This sounds fantastic and is so much quicker and simpler than the old system. But there is a fundamental difference, which is that all transactions are centralized in real time as they happen. In other words, one system will be able to know about every single digital transaction in the economy as the transactions occur. This is the critical difference with the new digital monetary system that everyone needs to be aware of. All transactions are centralized in real time as they happen. The people who are planning this new system have made it clear that it would be useful, in their eyes, to use artificial intelligence algorithms in real time to block certain public transactions for a range of different reasons. So, what does this mean for John? Let's just say there is another lockdown and the government want to stop the public moving about the country. With this new system, they could introduce a simple change. That would mean John's wallet would only work if he was located within a certain distance of his own home. Argos is two miles from John's house and he decides to go and buy his daughter a birthday present. He attempts to pay £50 for the product with the app. The app communicates directly with the Bank of England's computer system and the system rejects John's payment before it is made because the system knows that John is two miles from his own home and John's wallet has been limited to spending within just one mile. John cannot now buy anything unless he moves closer to his own home. His money is now useless if he wants to go anywhere. Why doesn't John just use cash? That would be a good solution for John as long as cash is still in use. So how might this new system be introduced? The Prime Minister called an emergency meeting today to discuss the unprecedented slide into economic recession in the UK and global economies. Inflation is out of control and high interest rates are causing thousands of house repossessions. All cash points and over-the-counter cash services are now frozen and millions of people face losing their life savings as a number of high street banks are declared insolvent. The government and the Bank of England are accelerating the introduction of a new central bank digital currency, which all bank customers in the UK will be able to receive in exchange for their existing money, which in many cases is now unobtainable from their bank accounts. The government say that the new digital money will help the economy recover from recession and will be used to bail out public and corporate money currently held in millions of bank accounts by banks that are at the point of collapse. It says cash unobtainable from this account. It's frozen our money. Bleeding hell, John. How much have we got in the house? We've only got £120 and when that's gone, nothing. I don't believe it. The bank's frozen our money. We've got £25,000 in that account and no way of getting it back. Download your central bank CBDC wallet app today and get bonus digital pounds free. If you exchange your existing bank funds into your digital currency wallet now, you will receive free digital pounds for each account you exchange. You can then spend from your digital wallet by using your phone app, exactly like a debit card. Download the free app now from the UK government website or the App Store. John, we need to download the digital wallet thing. See if we can transfer it in. We've got no other option, love. Well, it's transferred and it's given us some bonus money. I can't believe it. How do you know it's worked? It's worked, love. Everyone's using this money now. Right, I'm off down Tesco to try it out. Sorted. Recent figures show that the public's use of cash has halved in the last 12 months. Experts say this is due to the success and sheer convenience of the new CBDC digital money. The government has announced that all cash will be phased out completely over the next three years. 
I can't remember the last time I used cash. It seems so cumbersome and old-fashioned, fiddling about with coins every time you want to buy something. It's much easier now. Have you seen the remote control, love? <laughs> Look what I found. Remember these? What are you going to do with that? Well, I don't know. Look, why don't we keep it? I'll put it in a picture frame. Recent data from the annual Climate Change Conference has revealed that only a drastic reduction in fossil fuel use will help protect against climate change. The government has announced limits on petrol and diesel use for all individuals in the UK, which will be enforced using smart money. Each wallet will be limited to a purchase of 15 litres per week, after which the wallet will be prevented from making any further purchases in that week. Ah, bollocks. Growing concerns over obesity and bad health will be tackled using the Smart Money Network. The government proposes to limit the total number of sugary foods that each digital wallet can purchase in any given month. What? Experts say that the new pandemic, which is ten times more contagious and deadly than coronavirus, can only be defeated by minimising all human contact and staying home as much as possible. In order to enforce this, all digital wallets will only work within one mile of the address at which they are registered. Shopping times will be staggered so that you can only make purchases for a two-hour period each day. All non-essential item purchases will be rejected. Jesus Christ! The government, in a move to stimulate growth in the economy, is trying to ensure that all benefit money paid out to the public is spent within an appropriate time period. From the 1st of August, all benefit payments, including the new social credits, should be spent within two months of receiving them. Benefit money will expire and be of no use if it is not spent within the two-month period. Blimey, they're putting a shelf life on money. Vaccination uptake for the latest pandemic is now at 95%. Anyone who has not been vaccinated will have restrictions placed on their wallets. For the 5% unvaccinated, spending will only be allowed at certain times and within one mile of home. Certain goods such as alcohol, travel tickets and restaurant purchases will not be available for those who have not been vaccinated and their digital wallets will not work outside of the UK. Wow! Concerns are growing over people who grow and supply their own food outside of government-approved companies. The government will be restricting the purchase of all seeds and other farming products for anyone that is not a registered farmer. What are they doing that for? The government is trying to reduce the amount of red meat people eat in their diet for environmental and health reasons. Digital wallets will only be allowed to purchase 8 ounces of red meat per week. How much is 8 ounces? In order to protect the environment, the government is introducing limitations on the amount each wallet will be able to spend on the following products. Aerosol cans, single-use plastics, coal, meat, chocolate, fish and coffee. What about fags? In a move to encourage good behaviour, the government is awarding digital currency direct to your wallet if you report on anyone breaking lockdown rules or report on individuals expressing extremist views. Anyone deemed to be expressing extremist views may in turn have restrictions placed on their wallets. What's that mean, extremist views? If you give up your cash, you will give up freedom for yourself and you will give up the freedom of generations to come. It's not the convenience of the new money that is important. What is important is the fact that centralised administration of smart money could be used to control every aspect of your life. Say yes to keeping cash and say no to centrally controlled smart money. What they are going to propose is not money, it is a social control system. Please spread this message.